ancient beings of might and magic whose black bones were found across the known world. Dragons were a large, colorfully scaled reptilian species with two legs and two wings, used to soar through the air, breathing fire upon prey before consuming their cooked flesh. Wielding claws, long tails, and sharp teeth upon powerful jaws, with enough space and food, dragons could grow large enough to consume mammoths whole. Among the many theories concerning their origins, the people of the Valyrian Peninsula claim to discover dragons living in the 14 Flames volcano chain, learning to create personal, possibly magical, possibly telepathic connections with these fire-breathing beasts to fly on their backs and wield them in combat. Intelligent creatures, a bonded dragon protected their rider and obeyed most orders, though they were powerful and temperamental beasts which could, at times, prove difficult or impossible to control. Though most believed they had two genders, some maesters believed they had no fixed gender and could change as needed. Either way, some mated with a single partner, developing another, possibly telepathic connection to feel when the other is wounded or killed. Though Valyrian civilization was destroyed in 102 BC, their legacy lived on through House Targaryen, a minor noble family that survived the doom of Valyria and used their dragons to invade Westeros a century later in the Wars of Conquest, capturing six of the continent's seven kingdoms to establish the reign of King Aegon Targaryen in 1 AC. Defeating the Kingdom of the North, the Kingdom of the Mountain and Vale, the Kingdom of the Isles and Rivers, thereafter separated into the Iron Islands and Riverlands, the Kingdom of the Rock, the Kingdom of the Reach, and the Kingdom of the Storm, they at last faced defeat against Southern Dorne, which remained independent. Ruling over what they called the Seven Kingdoms, House Targaryen administered the realm from King's Landing in the newly created Crownlands, and in many ways adapted to the local culture, but also differed significantly, practicing incest to keep their bloodline pure, believing it was their Valyrian blood that allowed them to bond with dragons. Yet this was not always necessary, as they could also marry into other surviving Valyrian families like House Valerion, great sailors and longtime allies who ruled the island of Driftmark near Dragonstone. Throughout the first half century of their rule, House Targaryen suffered many setbacks, wars, and defeats, but were able to keep their stranglehold on power thanks in large part to their terrifying dragons. Yet at last, the realm entered into a golden age of peace and prosperity under King Jaehaerys I, who ruled from 48 to 103 AC, leaving a wealthy, thriving kingdom to his grandson Viserys I, who ruled from 103 to 129 AC. A good-hearted man who did his best to continue his predecessor's legacy of excellence, Viserys instead led his family and people to the brink of civil war. Although Westeros functioned as a feudal monarchy, the overwhelming might of House Targaryen's dragons meant the king could act as an absolute ruler, changing laws, ignoring precedent, and establishing reforms as he saw fit. Therefore, when the wife of Viserys Targaryen birthed only one surviving child, the king broke from the tradition demanding a male successor to name his daughter Rhaenyra as heir to the Iron Throne. Attending small council meetings and shadowing her father, Rhaenyra spent years training to be the first ruling queen of Westeros, but a year after the death of her mother in 105 AC, Viserys married Alicent Hightower, an ambitious young woman who over the next few years had four children, a girl Helena, and three boys, Egan, Aemond, and Darren, meaning the king now had multiple possible male successors, creating a rivalry between the Blacks for Rhaenyra and Greens as supporting Alicent's eldest boy, Aegon. Though Viserys saw the terrible rift forming in his family, his jovial, conflict-averse mentality made him unable or unwilling to remedy the situation, ultimately leading to the worst, bloodiest civil war in Targaryen history. The scheming began almost immediately in 129 AC, when King Viserys died in his sleep at the age of 52, causing the Greens to crown Aegon II as King of Westeros, while on Dragonstone, Rhaenyra was crowned Queen, beginning the civil war. Easily the greatest weapons in each faction's arsenal, their dragons and dragon lords went on to unleash mass devastation against the lands and people of the continent. Emerging from decades of peace and plenty, the dragon population drastically increased, so that by the reign of King Viserys, every newborn child of Targaryen blood was given a dragon egg in their crib, resulting in 20 living dragons by 129 AC and one born during the war. 
the oldest, largest, and deadliest of their bonded dragons. Vagar aided House Targaryen conquer the continent a century earlier, and had grown nearly as large as Balerion the Black Dread, who died of old age some years before. Originally claimed by Queen Visenya Targaryen, Vagar was next paired with Prince Balon, Lena Valerion, and finally Prince Aemon, the second son of Alicent Hightower. A bronze she-dragon with greenish-blue highlights and bright green eyes, Vagar was a veteran of many battles and gave the green faction an overwhelming advantage anywhere she was deployed. A slender but fearsome she-dragon of silver and pale blue, Dreamfire was one of the oldest dragons, originally bonded to Reyna Targaryen, the sister of King Jaehaerys, and during the Civil War was claimed by young Helena, the only daughter of Alicent Hightower. A beautiful golden and pink dragon, Sunfire the Golden, was younger than some of the others, but also a large and ferocious fighter claimed by young Aegon Targaryen, eldest son of Alicent and claimant king in the Civil War. A beautiful blue and copper she-dragon, Tesserion the Blue Queen, was the youngest of the combat-capable green faction dragons, claimed by Prince Darren Targaryen, the youngest son of Alicent Hightower. Roughly a third the size of Vermithor, Tesserion was nimble and fearsome, breathing blue flame upon her enemies during the war. Among the youngest of the green faction dragons, Morgul was bonded to Jahera, the daughter of King Aegon and Queen Helena Targaryen, too small for use in combat, and was eventually separated from its rider when Jahera was sent away from the capital for her safety. Bonded to Jaehaerys, the twin brother of Jahera, Shrikos was similarly too small for combat and spent much of the war chained in the dragon pit. The second largest of the dragons, Vermithor was a bronze male with great tan wings, but began life as an egg placed in the crib of Jaehaerys Targaryen. After the king's death, he remained riderless until the Civil War, when the black faction of Dragonstone called on all dragon seeds to claim a dragon and fight for their cause. Hoping some of the common folk might have traces of Valyrian blood, Vermithor was claimed by Hard Hugh Hammer, a large brutish man who rode him to great devastation in the war. Mimicking the relationship of their original riders, Vermithor was mated with Silverwing, a silvery she-dragon placed as an egg in the crib of Queen Alysanne Targaryen, the sister and future wife of King Jaehaerys. Relatively docile and friendly, Silverwing was claimed during the Dragon Seed event by Ulf the White, a former man-at-arms that befriended Hugh Hammer. One of their fiercest and most battle-hardened dragons, Caraxes the Bloodworm, was lean but large, growing to roughly half the size of Vagar. Claimed by Aemon Targaryen, a son of King Jaehaerys, Caraxes later passed to the infamous rogue prince Daemon Targaryen, the troublemaking brother of King Viserys, who first married Lena Valerion and later Queen Rhaenyra, fighting for the Blacks in the Civil War. Large and yellow scaled, Cyrax was the fearsome and exceedingly well fed she dragon of Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen, who produced many eggs throughout her life and often flew alongside Caraxes as their riders were married. Known as the Red Queen, the Red, Pink, and Copper She-Dragon Maelies was one of the fastest dragons they ever bred, first bonded to Alyssa Targaryen, daughter of King Jaehaerys, and then Princess Rhaenys, the old king's granddaughter who married Lord Corlys Valerion. A pale, silver-gray dragon, younger and nimbler than many others, Sea Smoke was claimed by Laenor Valerion, son of Rhaenys Targaryen and Corlys Valerion of Driftmark. Riderless for a time after the death of Laenor, he next bonded with the dragon seed Adam of Hall, the supposed bastard son of Laenor, who may have actually been the bastard son of Lord Corlys. One of the younger Targaryen dragons, Vermax was given as an egg to Prince Jacaris Valerion, with many doubting it would ever hatch due to the rumors Rhaenyra's offspring were not fathered by her first husband, Laenor, but instead were the illegitimate children of her champion Sir Harwin Strong. But much to their surprise, Vermax hatched without issue and bonded with Jacaris, joining him on an important diplomatic mission at the start of the Civil War so they might secure alliances with the Vale and North. Another young dragon of the Black Faction, Arax, was given as an egg to Rhaenyra's second-born son, Lucerys Valerion, growing gold and pearl white, large enough to ride by the start of the war but roughly five times smaller than Vagar. Smaller than both Arax and Vermax, the egg of Taraxis was given to Joffrey Valerion, youngest son of Rhaenyra and Laenor. Though he was big enough to ride during the war, the queen feared for her son's life and forbade him from fighting. 
Slender, pale green and pearl white, the young she-dragon Moondancer bonded with Bela Targaryen, daughter of Daemon Targaryen and Lena Valerion. About a year into the war, she remained small and quick, but grew large enough to ride roughly the size of a horse. Born during the Civil War, the pink and black dragon Morning hatched from one of three eggs given to Princess Rhaena, another daughter of Daemon Targaryen and Lena Valerion. The daughter of Syrax, Morning was too young and small to participate in the war. A young dragon too small for a rider throughout much of the war, Stormcloud was given as an egg to Aegon Targaryen the Younger, son of Rhaenyra and her second husband Daemon Targaryen. In addition to the bonded dragons of House Targaryen, three wild dragons lived on Dragonstone, hunting to survive and flying where they pleased, with the oldest called Cannibal because he feasted on dead and newly hatched dragons. Though smaller than Vagar and Vermithor, Cannibal was possibly the oldest living dragon born before the Doom of Valyria, with scales black as coal and eyes of green, so fearsome and aggressive he killed any other dragon or would-be dragon rider that got in his way. Born when Cannibal was still young, the skinny mud-brown dragon Sheepstealer earned his name by stealing sheep. Not aggressive against humans, Sheepstealer was over 50 when claimed by the dragon seed Nettles, a skinny dark-skinned girl who cleverly won the dragon's favor by feeding him mutton. Sheepstealer killed more candidates than all other claimed dragons combined, including Alan of Hall, whose cloak was set ablaze, and Silver Dennis, who lost an arm in the attempt. The youngest of the wild dragons, Grey Ghost, was shy and quiet, mostly consuming fish to survive. Able to hide among the clouds thanks to its pale white color similar to morning mist, Grey Ghost was rarely seen and never claimed by a rider. Unleashing the ferocity of their dragons throughout the Civil War, it wasn't long before both sides exhausted and squandered their most valuable resource. As the Dance of the Dragons began, Queen Rhaenyra sought powerful alliances and so sent her eldest son Jacaris upon Vermax to the Vale in North, while Daemon Targaryen and Caraxes flew to the Riverlands. And while both missions accomplished much, the third voyage of Lucerus Valerion flying Arax to the Stormlands ended in bitter tragedy. Mistakenly believing Boros Baratheon was an ardent supporter of the Queen, Lucerys found Aemon Targaryen of the Greens negotiating an alliance. Still holding a grudge for the loss of his eye years earlier, Aemon wanted to attack the boy, and while Boros forbid it in his hall, he allowed Aemon to give chase once Lucerys flew away, resulting in a fight above Shipbreaker Bay, where both Arax and his rider were killed. When the Greens later turned their attention to conquering the Crownlands, they sacked Duskendale before moving on to Rook's Rest, where House Staunton sent for aid, prompting Princess Rhaenys of the Blacks to arrive on Maelys the Red Queen. Engaging in the Battle of Rook's Rest against King Aegon on Sunfire and Prince Aemon on Vagar, Maelys viciously bit Sunfire's neck, which caused a chaotic melee sending all three crashing to the ground. Suffering a terrible defeat, Rhaenys and her dragon were killed while Aemond and Vagar emerged unharmed. The king and his dragon also survived but were both critically wounded, with Sunfire tearing a wing and Aegon suffering burns and broken bones. As Sunfire was unable to fly, a green garrison fed and protected him until House Mooton recaptured Rook's rest and sent their warriors to slay the dragon. Although Sunfire's wounds did not heal perfectly, he was recovered enough to kill 60 men and take flight to escape. Serving as regent while the king was wounded, Aemon mounted Vagar and traveled to Harrenhal, hoping to eliminate the enemy's best fighters, Daemon and Caraxes. Yet he found the fortress empty, with Daemon long gone, and so Aemon used Vagar to rain terror and death upon the Riverlands, but in doing so left a large green army undefended, resulting in their defeat and the loss of the territory. Yet Aemond finally got his wish when Daemon spread the word, inviting his rival to a final confrontation in Harrenhal. Engaging in the battle above the God's Eye, Vagar and Caraxes locked together as they crashed into the ground, killing them all. Yet just before impact, Daemon ensured his opponent's death by jumping from his seat to launch through the air, wielding the Valyrian steel sword Dark Sister and stab Aemon Targaryen through his eye. As the war escalated, the Blacks hoped the Dragon Seeds might gain them a decisive advantage, but then suffered a catastrophe in their first expedition, engaging in the Battle of the Gullet, one of the bloodiest sea battles in history. 
It all began when the green allied triarchy of Essos sent 90 ships to break the Valyrian sea blockade around the capital, and along the way encountered a vessel carrying the enemy queen's sons to Pentos. Capturing her youngest Viserys and his dragon egg, the second youngest Aegon mounted young Stormcloud for the first time, who despite grievous wounds, flew to Dragonstone, ensuring his rider's safety before passing away. The fleet then attacked the Gullet, causing Jacaris, eldest son of the Queen, to mount Vermax and lead the Dragon Seeds into battle, destroying 62 of 90 ships. The foreign fleet, however, had experienced fighting dragons and killed both Vermax and his rider before retreating. One disaster then followed another, when two of the Dragon Seeds were next sent to the First Battle of Tumbleton, where Hugh Hammer upon Vermithor and Ulf the White on Silverwing betrayed the Blacks to fight alongside Prince Darren and Tessarion, securing victory for the Greens. Yet they were unable to capitalize on this victory, as the Dragon Seed betrayers proved greedy and belligerent, refusing to move until their outrageous demands were met, as Wolf the White wanted Highgarden, capital of the Reach, while Hugh Hammer donned a crown of black iron to proclaim himself King of Westeros. Unable to leave the area, the Greens eventually fell under attack in the Second Battle of Tumbleton when an army arrived led by the loyal dragon seed Adam Valerion upon Sea Smoke, engaging in a chaotic melee with Vermithor and Tessarion, both riderless as Hugh Hammer was killed by a loyal Green supporter and Prince Darren died in the fighting. The battle between these three dragons left Sea Smoke and Adam Valerion dead, while Vermithor was badly wounded and died soon after. Tessarion was also injured beyond recovery, and died later in the afternoon put out of its misery with three arrows to the eye. As Ulf the White was so drunk he slept through the battle, his dragon Silverwing avoided the conflict by flying high into the air, only coming down to check on her mate, discovering Vermithor dead. According to the singers, she tried to lift his wing three times before flying away. When Ulf the White awoke, he quickly named himself King, but was soon poisoned to death by a loyal green supporter, leaving Silverwing without a mate or rider, and so she remained wild the rest of her life, making her lair on a small island in Red Lake, northwest of the Reach. After the suicide of her rider, Helena Targaryen, Dreamfire remained chained in the Dragon Pit alongside the young dragons Taraxis, Morgul, and Shrikos. Though Queen Rhaenyra ruled from the capital for a time, the end of her reign saw the city fall to chaos and rioting, allowing a mad prophet called the Shepherd to rally a great mob and storm the Dragon Pit, believing the dragons were demons which brought forth the doom of men. Desperate to fight and protect the dragons, including Taraxis chained in the Dragon Pit, young Joffrey Valerion disobeyed orders and flew his mother's dragon Syrax into battle. Unfortunately for the prince, Syrax would not accept another rider while the queen still lived, and so the boy was tossed off and fell to his death in the streets below. Lured by bloodshed, Syrax then descended to the ground, where she tore apart rioters with teeth and claws until slain by the mob. Meanwhile, the storming of the dragon pit continued, with the dragons killing many rioters, until Morgul was struck down by a spear through the eye, delivered by the Burning Knight, a warrior engulfed in flame who died in the effort. Shrikos, who remained riderless after the murder of young Jaehaerys by the infamous Blood and Cheese, was killed by Hob the Hewer, supposedly with seven blows to the head, while Taraxis was strangled with his own chain and his skin later made into a cloak by survivors. The largest of the four, Dreamfire was the only one able to break free from her chains, flying within the domed dragon pit to rain fire upon her enemies. Eventually, she took a bolt to the eye and crashed into the roof, collapsing the building to kill most below. After recovering from the Battle of Rook's Rest, Sunfire made his lair on Dragonstone, where he killed the wild dragon Grey Ghost and was eventually reunited with King Aegon II when the Greens captured the island. Now stuck behind enemy lines, Princess Bela, the daughter of Daemon, rode young Moondancer against Sunfire and the enemy king, but was badly outmatched, leading to her capture and the death of her dragon. Aegon II survived the fighting, but once again suffered a terrible injury, never again able to ride Sunfire, who was so badly wounded after years of fighting, he grew weaker by the day and unable to fly. When the Greens captured the enemy queen Rhaenyra Targaryen, she was fed to Sunfire, who ignored her until she was pricked to draw blood and lure him to the target. Rhaenyra was then burned alive and eaten by Sunfire, while her son Aegon the Younger watched in horror. 
a veteran of many battles, Sunfire's wounds grew worse in the coming days until he stopped eating and died. Born during the war, Morning hatched from the eggs of Syrax and was sent to safety in the Vale with her rider Reyna Targaryen as both were too young for combat. The only Targaryen dragon and rider to survive the war, they went on to have great influence when the fighting ended and her half-brother, Rhaenyra's son Aegon III was declared king. Though Morning was the last bonded Targaryen dragon, the wild cannibal stayed out of the fighting entirely and so survived the war but disappeared soon after. The last dragon to survive the dance, Sheep Stealer and her dragon seed rider Nettles fought bravely in the Battle of the Gullet before joining Daemon Targaryen and Caraxes as they hunted Vagar in the Riverlands. Yet after the betrayal of Hugh and Ulf, the Queen ordered the arrest of the other dragon seeds, Adam Valerion and Nettles, though both escaped as they were warned in advance. Traveling with her possible lover, Daemon Targaryen, he refused to comply with Rhaenyra's order, instead letting Nettles and Sheepstealer depart safely. Possibly spending the rest of their days in the Mountains of the Vale, they were spotted and attacked a few years after the war in 134 AC, resulting in 16 dead and 60 wounded. Sheepstealer and Nettles then fled deeper into the mountains, where they may have been worshipped by an offshoot of the Painted Dogs clan who revered a fire witch, sending their young boys to face the flames of her dragon and prove their manhood. Some believe this was the origin of the Burned Men clan, who had their boys give some part of their body to the fire, proving their courage as men. Lasting from 129 to 131 AC, the Dance of the Dragons left Westeros utterly ravaged, losing many farms, towns, castles, resources, and lives. Yet perhaps the most impactful consequence came from the deaths of all but four dragons, two of which, Silverwing and Cannibal, remained wild the rest of their lives, while Sheepstealer lived in exile. This left mourning as the last Targaryen dragon, massively reducing the power and influence of the royal family, lessening further with each passing year until the dragons died out entirely, allowing for the overthrow of their dynasty by King Robert Baratheon of the Stormlands in 283 AC. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Tim, Dane the Battlehammer, Zong the Black Wolf, and Sir Rick Lone. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.